Hello, welcome to Brittany's Impact series. I'm Jenny Hallett, and this series is about alcohol addiction and how it affected my uh, sweet and loving daughter, uh, Brittany Rose Hallett, uh, that basically quickly led to her death at just the age of 26. And so this is about how it affected her, how it affected my life, how it affected all of her you know, friends and family, and I really, the main point is I'm hoping to turn her death into hopefully a positive impact to, my hope is to save as many lives as possible with the information uh, that I can provide and hopefully a lot of encouragement for people uh, to get into recovery. So today I want to talk about teenage and college drinking. So, you know, I've been basically living and breathing um, research on addiction for about seven years now. And I know that if teenagers and parents both really, uh, really understood what I have learned, I really believe that teenagers would not want to be drinking alcohol and parents wouldn't want them to, uh, especially while their brains are actually still developing Till about the age of 25. So, you you know, alcohol is affecting your brain while it's still in the process of developing. So, the um, according to the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, they said that uh, people who reported starting to drink before the age of 15 were four times more likely to also report meeting the criteria for alcohol dependence at some point in their lives. So that means it actually could affect them even down the road in their lives, four times greater. So I think that's really, really key and people really need to start kind of paying attention to that. Now I know that college life can be one of the happiest times of your life. That's awesome. But you know, I just want people to be really careful because there's a lot of pressure out there uh, to, you know, drink alcohol, uh, especially in college life. And so I just want people to be careful about the pressures from their friends. Um, and don't pressure your friends. You know, if they don't want to drink, let them, let them be. Don't try to force them into it. Uh, they may have a problem that they don't want to tell you about for, for all you know. So there can be pressures, of course, in college, like school too, you know, like uh, high school. Um, pressures with stress and anxiety from classes and tests, things like that. Uh, you need to try to find better coping mechanisms that don't involve any kind of, you know, mind-altering drugs. Um, some people will, you know, for the pressure of meeting new people, they'll, you know, want to have something kind of loosen them up and make them fit in a little more. So that's something to really try to resist uh, doing that. And of course, uh, college life is just, uh, especially here in Wisconsin, it is, you know, party time. And uh, there's all kinds of drinking games and just partying going on everywhere. So these are things that, that, that quite frankly, is where, you know, my daughter, I believe it really took her down. Um, her, I mentioned before, her grades were, she was a straight A student her entire life. It was following through into college. And uh, yeah, when all this partying uh, took place when she went to college, that's where uh, once I saw her transcripts after she died, I found her transcripts in her room. And uh, you know, she was still getting straight A's and a few B's all along until the alcoholism finally took a hold of her. And then all of a sudden for the first time in her life, she was getting D's and F's. So, um, you know, that partying, just be really careful about how, how you do that. Um, you know, Brittany, you know, she had pressures too because once she became addicted, you know, it was really hard for her to still go to classes. You know, get up, you're hungover. Um, when she was in class, I'm sure she, you know, was having trouble with her memory. And she always was extremely intelligent. But I began seeing her. Uh, forgetting things that she never used to do. So that was affecting her college, you know, learning also, I'm sure. So it was really um, a lot of pressure because 
once that started happening and she couldn't really continue with her, she only had about 13 credits or so left to get her degree, but it got to a point where she just couldn't go anymore, just couldn't get out of bed. Problem is, once that happened, her student loan debt now was starting to accrue interest because she was no longer in school. She couldn't even get out of bed, number one, to go to school, but she couldn't get out of bed to hold a job. There was just no way. She needed to get into recovery first. And so that just added to her depression because she knew that there was no way for her to be able to earn the money to be able to pay this interest that was just, her, her debt wasn't just staying stable, it was increasing. And so that just really weighed on her heavily which of course then made her drink even more to just kind of numb it out so she wouldn't have to deal with it. And uh, you know, it was just really sad to see that going on with her. So after she died, um, a letter came in the mail that I got and it was actually denying her uh, to be, she had applied apparently, I didn't know about it at the time, but she had applied to uh, get onto disability. And letter came after she died denying her so you know she'd been rushed by ambulance quite a few times five or six times in the last year year and a half of her life uh, she died from the alcohol addiction you know what more does it take to be considered to have this be a disability because alcoholism can be considered a disability uh, she was an acute alcoholic and she was denied so you know something's wrong there <laughs> um, and that was a huge part of I think that just made her just sort of give up because she just couldn't see a way out of it so you know I, I'm pretty sure that if she had gotten disability you know you can't uh, like I said you can't or she wasn't able to file bankruptcy to even you know erase student loan debt but I'm pretty sure that if she had at least gotten classified as having a disability, pretty sure that the interest at least would have been frozen. So at least it wouldn't have been growing. And so that's something you know people need to really think about too when you get student loan debt. You just be really careful. Um, you know you're going to be able to follow through and pay that off. At least in her case, that's how it happened. Um, so you know, like I said, she just drank to dump it out. She couldn't see any way out of it. So you know, the thing that I'm noticing with many many people with addiction um, it seems to just be kind of a well-known thing between uh, people in recovery when they talk is people with addiction seem to have a real kind of a problem where they need instant gratification it's just really hard to see past a few weeks out so you know in in my mind I'm sitting here thinking you know she's incredibly intelligent if she could just stop drinking which was a big problem, but if we could get that solved, then she could have been able to, she was smart enough, she would have been able to get her degree, and she would have been able to easily get, you know, a decent job and been able to pay it off, but she just couldn't see that far down the road. And, you know, alcohol um, addiction, when, you've, when you're drinking heavily for a long time, it really does, it messes with your brain, and it it really does affect your decision making so you know things that seem rational and sensible to you and I to or people who aren't addicted it's different it's you know you're, you're talking it's messing with your brain and it really does affect how the decision process is done and she just couldn't see past that she just couldn't see a way out of it so that's something that you know I would like to see you know colleges um, and maybe they do this um, it's hard you know once your kids are 18 uh, by the time they go to college you know there's these um, HIPAA laws and things where parents it's extremely hard to um, help your child or get the information you need because you can no you're no longer allowed to really get that information um, I found that a lot with you know medical doctors, you know, every time she'd go to the ER, if she was in counseling, you know, I would have her tell them that it was okay to talk to me about, you know, what was going on, but I could still, I, I, you know, they know that you've 
told them to say that. So um, I always kind of didn't trust that they were really giving me the full picture on things. So the thing is, is, you know, maybe they can do this, but I wish that colleges would be able to kind of have someone sort of monitoring, you know, somebody who's been having A's and B's pretty much, you know, the first couple of years, now all of a sudden you see this drop off. I'm hoping that they, um, if they don't, that they will implement these types of things is to really be looking for that and hopefully have counselors reach out to them and ask, you know, hey, is something going on? It may not even be alcohol addiction, it could be depression, anxiety, um, but, you know, have resources there available to help guide them and point them in the right direction. So I honestly don't know if they did that for her, um, but I would really hope that they would. Uh, so the other thing um, that I really want kids to really uh, start thinking about, you know, if you're in school or college and you're seeing, you know, that drinking is really getting to a point where your grades are low, getting dropped or you're missing classes or it's really affecting your life, please get help right away. Because it is a brain disease, it's just going to keep getting worse and worse. And denial is deadly with this kind of a disease because that allows it to keep progressing and just get more and more of a hook in you and, and really take control over you. So, you know, I, I'm hoping that people will, you know, be really careful about that. The one thing with um, colleges these days is it's really becoming common. There's kind of a trend where, where students are actually drinking to the point of blacking out on purpose. This is so dangerous. I just can't even express to you the danger that it's like playing Russian roulette. It's just, it's like spinning a gun with a bullet in the chamber and hoping it doesn't go off when you pull the trigger. So, you know, drinking to the point of blacking out is not smart. And if you're ever at a party and you or anywhere else, anyone else, um, you know, passes out, uh, you know, people tend to think, oh, we'll just let them, put them over here and we'll let them just kind of sleep it off. But what people don't realize is that alcohol actually takes a while to get fully into your system. So a person, if they're drinking heavily enough, they could potentially, you know, pass out and then you might think, well, we'll just let them sleep it off. And they might be fine. Point problem is, is they may have drank so much that at the point they pass out, they may have so much in them that they will continue to get more and more drunk, more and more intoxicated to a level that could literally shut all their organs down. So you don't ever want to just leave somebody, you know, alone. Um, you want to keep a good look at look up, you know, really watch over them. And if you think that they've had a lot, please call 911 because you don't want to be the one that's going to be responsible for not calling someone and have that person, you know, die and have to live with that the rest of your life. You know, I don't care, uh, you know, don't, you know, if you're underage, don't not call just because you're afraid of getting in trouble. You're talking about, you know, your friend's life. Um, and the thing is, if, if it's you drinking, you know, don't trust that someone else is going to be able to call on you. They might be so out of it, they don't even realize you're, you even have a problem. Or they could be afraid to call. So you could, live, you could be the one that dies because either they're too out of it to notice or they're afraid to call. They don't want to get themselves or you or both into trouble. So, you know, that's something that you really need to be careful about. So uh, all I can say, you know, is you really need to be careful, uh, even when you turn 21, like I said before, you know, your brain is really still growing till about 25 years of age. So you want to really be careful about putting that, it's a, it's a drug, alcohol is a legal drug, but it is an intoxicant, you know, it's a, it's a toxin that your liver is trying to remove because it's not a good thing for you so you know if you're gonna drink at all please 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 you know just be really careful and mindful about very minimal you know 
keep keep the frequency way down and keep the number of drinks and at a time at per sitting way down and you really if you're if you're a minor you just really shouldn't be doing it for your own good for your body's own good and as, even as an adult you need to really be mindful of keeping it down to basic bare bone minimums and if you ever start getting to where you just are really craving it I'm, I'm going to tell you a little story about myself because I believe myself I really do believe that I kind of kind of stuck my head in the bubble a little bit once uh, and this was a few years ago when Brittany when she was just kind of uh, first realizing that she was having a problem or when I was first realizing she was having a problem and you know I was dating someone and we kind of were having some you know romantic evenings um, each weekend and um, honestly I think you know I've mentioned before I just never ever had much interest myself I just didn't want to drink didn't want to be out of it. I like my mind to be, you know, where I know what I'm doing. Um, never wanted that buzz. I didn't want to be drunk. So, you know, I might have a glass of wine or two in an entire year. But during this time, you know, I was dating someone and we were having fun. And of course, you know, we'd have some wine and, and be dancing and just kind of having a romantic evening. And it just kind of loosened you up a little bit, you know, for dancing. And so that's, you know, I would have a couple of glasses of wine. But then, you know, the next weekend we kind of did the same thing. And honestly, for the first time in over 50 years of life, I started a few days ahead before the weekend. I really did start to actually look forward, not just to, of course, you know, the romantic time with my boyfriend, but I was looking forward to that buzz to that love found feeling, you know, that, yeah, you know, never in my life did I ever even want that. Certainly not kind of really looking forward to it. And I'm telling you, if I wasn't dealing with my daughter going through her acute addiction at that time, I probably wouldn't have even recognized anything about it. But I, it, it was, it took me, I cut that right out. Um, I could probably, I, I could have a glass of wine now if I wanted to one time, uh, but I pretty much don't drink much anymore. Um, for me, you know, it's what killed my daughter, and it just, for me, it's hard for me to drink it. But even if I, um, even if I wanted to, I would be very careful about ever drinking much more than once in like six months, because I feel like I really did stick my head in the bubble I was thinking about it and couldn't wait for the weekend to come for that feeling and even now looking back I remember what that felt like I don't crave it but I really do believe I was on the beginning stages of that happening so you know it can happen to anyone at any time it's very possible because there's no set formula to predict who it's going to happen to um, and it people don't realize that you can actually be a social drinker for decades. I, I read about a 70 year old who became addicted for the first time in their life. So a lot of people think they're safe because they they know they can control it. They know I can drink it. Doesn't matter. Problem is circumstances or things can change and uh, maybe you know maybe something really bad goes on in their life so they you know a death or something and so they just drink because they're and then they get hooked or or maybe they just you know start partying more kind of like I was doing where I was going out more and more doing this you know so uh, suddenly your frequency is increasing and you don't know where that invisible line is until after you've crossed over it till after you realize there's a problem and you want to stop but by then you are addicted and once you're truly addicted, you're always addicted. You know, if you're truly addicted to drugs or alcohol, you know, you have to be very careful, uh, really, for the rest of your life. Because uh, I mentioned, I believe, uh, in these videos before, um, one of the times my daughter was in the hospital, there was actually a woman in there who had been sober for 18 years. 
and she was in there for drinking alcohol. So, you know, it's something that is always kind of hanging over, but it's manageable, but you've got to be diligent and you just have to make up your mind each day to choose not to, to drink once you become addicted um, and never take that first drink again because that first drink is the deadliest. It's the one that can open the floodgates back up to drinking. Um, so anyway, these are just some things. Um, my biggest thing is, you know, try to find, you know, be the person in, in whether you're in, you know, high school or college, you know, be the person that says, you know what, I don't need alcohol to make me feel happy. You know, let's do this. Let's go bowling or let's go play tennis. Um, and not the tennis where everybody's out drinking beer or along, you know, when you're done. You know, try to find ways. Be proud of, you know what, I don't need it. I want to be healthy. You know, just like people watch their calories. Think of all the calories that are is in alcohol. Think of all the money you can save by not drinking alcohol. Even a soda, which may not be the healthiest, but, um, you know, it's certainly a lot better than, than drinking um, a mind-altering drug. So, you know, be the, be the leader and, and, or, you know, if you don't want to be the leader, at least stick to your guns. And if someone gives you a hard time, you know, you don't really owe them an explanation. If they're a true friend, they're not going to force you. Um, and just say, you know what, I, d you know, I don't care to drink alcohol. You know, if you want to drink it, that's fine. But, you know, you know, respect my decision and, and definitely, you know, even if you are going to drink Please don't pressure someone else into drinking because you don't know they may have a problem with it that they just don't want to have to tell you. So always respect people's decision um, to just sit back and, you know, if you, if you feel like uh, you don't know how to respond or how to get out, just tell them that you're allergic to alcohol. Tell them it gives you headaches. Actually, wine does give me headaches. I actually do believe I have a little bit of an allergy to it. My nose closes up and I actually get a headache. So, you know, but I've never had a problem with telling people I don't want it, you know. But if you do have a problem, just tell them you're, you're allergic to it. And that should be good enough. So anyway, that's uh, basically everything that I kind of wanted to touch on today. You know, college life, like I said, can be just the best time of your life. But it can bring you down like it did my daughter. Just be very, very careful there. So... At this point, uh, that's kind of all that I can think of that I'd like to say right now. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, or if you think of something that maybe I should have touched on, you know, I'll try and bring them up in future videos. So again, if you care to subscribe to this channel, that way you'll be able to see future videos. And um, just as a reminder, I do have a website, and it's called uh, or it's found at www dot b r i t t a n y s a c a p dot com so that's britney's a cap dot com and so anyway i just hope that everybody out there you know keep fighting the fight and i love you forever sweet pea Brittany rose thank you everybody